in a ball which is being swung at the end of a rope and that rope is 0.9 meters and this and it's being swung in a vertical circle. Uh, we're given that at the point indicated in the picture over here when the string makes an angle of 30 degrees from the vertical that the speed of the ball is 3.5 meters per second. And the first question here is we're asked to find the tension in the string. Well, what I have done is I've drawn the free body diagram for this mass, and there are two forces acting on it. There is the force of gravity, which is acting downwards, and there's the tension force. Let's just label these um, coordinates right now. So we have the y coordinate going up and x is to the right. All right. So uh, to find the tension in the string, we should write out the uh, force, uh, the, the, sorry, we should turn to Newton's second law. So remember, Newton's second law. states that the net force should equal uh, mass times the acceleration. And I'm just going to consider the um, components of the forces in the radial direction. So that radial direction is actually along the direction of the string. So I'll call that direction r hat. Okay, now there's obviously the tension in the string in that direction, and there's also this um, component of the force of gravity right here, which is in the direct, uh, well, sorry, it's this line right here, which is the projection of the force of gravity onto the, the string. So that is a component of the force of gravity in the radial direction. So let's write out Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the tension, at least the magnitude of the tension force, minus, uh, rather, plus the um, mg cosine of 30 degrees. Remember, this is a right angle triangle. This is going to equal mass times the radial acceleration. And now the radial acceleration is a vector which points towards the center of the circle from the uh, in the radial direction from the ball. Okay, so here's Newton's second law. Uh, we're asked to find the tension, so we can solve for t. So t is equal to m a r minus m g cosine thirty. Now, this AR, it's a radial acceleration, so we know there's a relationship between um, AR, the speed, squared over the radius. This is our definition of radial acceleration, or centripetal acceleration. And we can plug that into our equation. We have mass times V squared over R plus mg cosine 30. And that's our expression for the tension. Now we can plug in numbers into this. We're, uh, we know the mass is 0 0.4 kilograms. The speed, when it makes an angle of 30 degrees from the vertical, is 3.5 meters per second. That's given in the problem. And we square that. Then we divide by the radius of 0.9 meters minus the component of gravity, which is 0.4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times cosine. Uh, that, that theta is, is really 30. Why don't we just write 30 in there? OK. Now when I calculated this, I got the tension force to be um, 2.05 newtons. OK. So that's the tension in the string. The next question is, what is the acceleration of the ball? We want the tangential and radial components. Well, the radial component, we've already written down an equation. It's that thing up there. So AR is just 3.5 meters per second. And we're squaring all of that, divided by the radius, which is 0.9 meters. And evaluating that should give you um, 5.44 meters per 
second squared. Now, that's just the radial. We want also the tangential um, acceleration, and we can get that from the component of the force of gravity, which is tangent to the path. That's this side of the triangle right there. In fact, um, why don't we just uh, label a few things on the diagram up here. So remember, this was our radial acceleration, and we have an acceleration due to gravity. I'm just going to call that a vector g. Um, and that's going downwards. There's a component of g which is perpendicular to the radius. So that's what we want. And uh, we can write that as a tangential, and that's equal to just g times the sine of 30 degrees, or plugging in the numbers, we have 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of 30, and that's equal to uh, 4.9 meters per second squared. All right, so we have the radial component and the tangential component of the acceleration. Let's go back up to our question. Now consider the ball at the top of the circle. What is the smallest speed of the ball so that it continues to move in a circle? Well, again, let's write out Newton's second law. Uh, it's the sum of the forces. Now, in this case, if we just consider the top of the circle, our two forces, we still have tension and we have weight. So the force of gravity, the tension force. Writing out Newton's second law, we have, um, we have T plus the um, weight mg is equal to mass times the radial acceleration. Now, all we need is some force in the radial direction for this to continue moving in a circle. So the smallest force we need, well, the only thing we really have control over is this tension. So the smallest force required is just going to be when tension is zero, and we just have the force of gravity, which we can't do anything about. So our expression becomes, for the smallest speed, that is, as mg is equal to mar. Now ar is v squared over r. And we can solve for V. V, in this case, is just uh, the M's cancel, and we get G times R. Plugging in our numbers, we have 9.8 meters per second squared times the radius of 0.9 meters. And I evaluated this to be 2.97 meters per second. Alright, thank you for watching this. Um, good luck.